Good afternoon. We are here with Dole and Vaughn from Pure Storage, and as you can see from the orange behind us, um, and we're happy that we're here today. Thank you for uh, having us here today, guys. Scott, thanks for coming out. Yeah, and that's fantastic. We are here to talk about storage trends in 2014, which I'm amazed it's already 2014. But uh, what's going on, guys? Well, you know, there's a, uh, a lot of demand in the market uh, for innovation within the storage, storage realm. Uh, the volume of data that customers are dealing with, along with the data center transformation that VMware kind of invoked six or seven years ago, is has kind of flipped the storage stack on its side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd say I'd say that that we're encountering real problems. We're encountering real problems in the storage space with the physical limitations that are coming into play from spinning disk. Yeah, there's. I mean, those are pretty pretty well known and well documented. But isn't there still a place for physical disk when it comes to capacity? Well, I think. That's a, that's a solid point, and if you look at what's been bubbling to the surface and now starting to shift from a number of vendors, is these alternative formats of storage that all blend flash in to help compensate from a performance element, right, and tend to blend it in with disk. But some of these, these models work with traditional array or array constructs, right. and some are more on the server side. So let's, let's deconstruct four in the time that we have in this video. So let's look at the emergence of hybrid storage arrays, so combining flash with spinning disk. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at all flash arrays. I mean, obviously we're here at Pure, and yeah. we've got a little bit of a, a, a bias or a view on, on that. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. But then let's look at two emerging technologies that start in the server side. So let's look at host side caching, where you're bringing flash into the uh, server itself, and it's front ending the back end storage array, mm -hmm. so traditionally disk storage array. And then let's also look at a new model, this converged storage ar architecture, which is blending disk and SSD inside of servers and using servers to construct a storage platform. And let's, let's actually start, if it's okay, with the hybrid players that we see Perfect. Uh, on, the, on the market. I'm actually a pretty big believer in that space. And I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm, I love, I'm a big believer in all flash, I'm a big believer in anything that's good. If it solves my problem, I'm a believer in it. Now, obviously, those have kind of risen up to the top and they're doing well um, because of the perceived cost and the, and of all flash arrays. You know, um, speak, can you speak to that a little bit? I mean, all people think all flash is expensive, therefore we need to figure out a way to kind of balance the sales there a little bit. Well, right, and a hybrid device exists today because of the concern about the cost of flash, right? Um, and the question is, how much flash can I get right. to mitigate the performance issues with the disk? and give myself the performance capabilities I need without the expense, right? I mean, that's fundamentally what it's for. Right. Um, and what we're seeing is some have a certain percentage of cash or a larger amount of cash or even a larger amount of cash, uh, depending on, on, on whose, whose system you're talking about. And I think the challenge is this. When you are putting workloads onto those flash hybrids, you get a great performance as long as you stay inside the cache space. Right. And once you go beyond the cache space onto the disk, the performance degradation is dramatic. Now you're still going to get a benefit from those. I, I, I don't want to denigrate them. Um, you know, I've been in storage long enough to know that there is there is value there. You know, you, you're going to get you know maybe a 30% improvement in performance, and that's nothing to shake a stick at. That's that's really important. But what it is really is is an economic arbitrage of the cost in the flash space versus the cost of disk. And those who are deploying them. I think are really wanting flash, but not wanting to pay for the whole thing. Yeah, and I would agree. I, I would agree with you. And if in the perfect world everybody would just buy all flash, there would be no capacity issues, and <laughs> you know we would be, uh, what a world that would be. <laughs> but, but I spent you know ten years sitting in the CIO chair. I, I often bring that that sort of perspective to, um, for better for worse, mm -hmm. um, to to what I'm looking at. And when I look at some of those hybrid players, I say, wow. You know, if I'm having trouble with, if I've topped out my rotational storage from a performance standpoint, I'm sick of throwing spindles at the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So why, when I look at an a, a, a entry point for an all-flash array versus something I can do with a, with a hybrid play, um, I kind of say, well, maybe the, you know, my replacement cycle is five years. That would get me through five years. What, what's the, wh you know, what's the, what's, is, there an, is there a different argument I should be thinking about? Well, I. I I'm going to take what you shared and, and maybe answer your question in, in a different sure. way. I think if you're an enterprise customer, most of the enterprise platforms have some means for you to add flash True. within the, the existing system. And as Joel said, look, at the, it's not up for debate. You add flash, you're extending the volume of 
of cash to rotational media. It may be a tier two cache or an eviction cache or read-only read-write. Doesn't matter. Any format of form uh, or volume of cash that gets flash that gets put in, acting as a cache, will increase performance. The new startups are kind of like this mid-market, this mid-tier platform, right. <clears throat> and I think that's maybe more in line with what you're speaking to, which is if I'm bit buying mid-market, is there is there a price point difference that maybe an off-flash device can't address within the mid-market? I think that question is better answered if we maybe segue here and say, well, let's discuss an all-flash array, sure. and I think it'll come back and answer your question. From a performance perspective, an all-flash array, I think, is the ideal or desired solution. It's, it's economically friendly from a perspective. It draws 10x less power. Mm -hmm. It generates 20x less heat. Right? It's very dense. I mean, a 128 gig NAND chip is the size of my thumbnail. And you don't have to wear uh, earplugs when you walk to the <laughs> data center, right? <laughs> exactly. The, everyone knows about the performance capabilities of Flash, but everybody also knows about the price premium. Right. Right. So the, the early entrance into the all-flash market focus solely on performance, right? They charge the premium for, for their products. And then you've seen this, what I'll call this second wave, these, these storage efficient, right? Economically friendly all-flash arrays. And, and we believe that we are leading that market, both in terms of product and capability, mm -hmm. but also in terms of, of, of sales um, and market share. Our basic premise is, is we provide an all-flash array for the price of disk. Now, that then puts the customer to a point to say, if you could have it, if I can validate that premise with you through a proof of concept, why would you choose disk? You, you wouldn't. Right, that's true. Now, there's realities to that statement, which is at the mid-market, yes, there are going to be boxes that are going to be available at a price point less than what we can come down to. Right, and that's about you guys have made um, a conscious decision that you're playing in a different part of the market, really. We, we, are, playing, we are playing in the For enterprise now, market. Because you could come down market later if you wanted to. Correct. So we are playing in the enterprise market, and what we tend to find is if we run into a mid-tier type of opportunity that's looking at a hybrid, for those customers, we basically ask them, if you're going to look for just a siloed solution to solve one business problem, something that's very tactical, mm -hmm. probably can't meet the price point of some hybrid that's a mid-tier. Right. If you want to look at Flash strategically and quickly shift to say, you know what, I can address the, the current issues of why you're looking at new storage, some tactical performance issue, right. and say, you know, let's run a multiple number of applications on here knowing that you will grow and you'll have storage needs for these other applications in the near future, then you can probably justify purchasing an all-flash array and, and reap these benefits. And we have a number of customers that have, that have done this uh, today. Right. Well, I think it's a key point to note also that there's a fundamental change in this industry that Flash is enabling, right? And you mentioned running multiple workloads on a single device. And with disks, you mentioned throwing spindles at a problem, yeah, right? Yeah, nobody wants to do. And nobody wants to do. With disk, what you've really had to do is say, a workload with a specific I.O. profile needs to be set on this set of disks. Right. Because I have to be cognizant all the time of how many spindles and how they're running. With Flash, running multiple workloads on this single device, you don't encounter those types of contention on those spindles. There's IOPS to spare, right? And you're able to really get that performance that you need to run multiple workloads. And I'm talking about painful ones. VDI at the same time as production servers, right? That sort of thing can make a big economic benefit to a customer that is initially thinking, well, I need this to accelerate my VDI. Okay. Well, have you ever thought that with Flash, your perception of what you can multiplex on a single device is just so much more opportunity there? So can I tell you guys a st story? I think there's a lot of interest in this space. And, and, it's, and, I, and I have a story that I think supports why there is, especially when you know, the, some of the some of what would be considered disruptive players, such as Pure, um, I think consider you disruptive. Absolutely. You're trying to you know <laughs> dethrone some people, but I was at a client site for, uh, um, and they have a well-established uh, SAN from a vendor that you probably are familiar with, um, and um, they have hundreds of terabytes of storage, and they need they all rotating disk, all of it, racks and racks and racks of disks. They needed to add one shelf one shelf of flash and to, do, to do, do that they needed to upgrade firmware and stuff like that the it was less expensive for them to tear out their entire sand and replace it with something else yeah 
than buy that one shelf of discs. Well, and I think it goes back to what Vaughn was talking about earlier, that there's a number of models which go from lots of flash to not very much flash. And, you know, our customers, the customers of those other vendors are all trying to figure out how much flash can I get for yeah. what I'm willing to spend and how can I get there. And, and as Vaughn said, you know, the, the basic premise of Pure is that we can do it for you at the price of disc, at which point flash makes natural sense. But I do think that, that as someone who's running data centers, right, your job is to look at things like server-side caching, right? right? Well, how much is this going to cost for one server, two servers, eight servers, and when I get to ten, is it not cheaper to buy a whole? That's array? true. Yeah, there's going to be a point. There's going to be there's going to be a break point. point at some point where the amount of stuff you're putting on flash is such that it just makes sense to go and the kind of complexity right device. into the data center because all of a sudden you're adding. Okay, now is the problem here? Is the problem here? Is the problem here? And you've got all these other things you've got to start dealing with when it comes to trying to troubleshoot, right? Yeah, I, th I think Joel made a, a brilliant transition, which is we covered storage array constructs. This hybrid, this all flash, these are familiar if you have a history with storage arrays. You may not, and you may say, hey, I'm a server-side admin, and I know I've got suffering performance problems. I'm looking at some per-host-side solution, and, and that's more economic, or more economical to, to introduce, and I'm just going to solve my problem. I'm not worried about the, right. the, the, <laughs> the greater exactly population. Right. Look, let's, let's be clear. Any form of flash anywhere, as we've said, will improve performance. If you move the, the flash from the array in a hybrid format, put it into the host, you are going to offload I.O. that goes all the way to the array and you will increase performance. With that said, all of the known host side caching software requires some form of tuning, assignment, and adjustment on a per application or virtual machine basis. Or you end up messing around with badly with latency right. and things like that. Right. Which means now you've got to start to understand you know, your infrastructure a little bit greater in depth and what happens if you mistune it or missize it or am I just going to oh, waste resources because I oversize. you spend more on management than yeah. you would on getting the, the, the actual fix to the right. problem. And so two elements. Yeah. One is if I purchase enough uh, instances of a host site solution, I could have bought a centralized all flash solution. That's Second right. issue. And we're not going to go into this here because of time, but when I actually go to all flash in a shared storage array, there are all these elements of data management that I no longer have to deal with. I don't right. configure RAID or stripes or, or parity sets or block sizes. Right? A lot of my data management tools were designed to restrict I.O. and to limit and preserve. When you come with 10x the I.O. performance, you just feed the masses. So guys, wouldn't it be safe to say that pure, you know, pure storage with an all flash array is Set it and forget it, and then but really, I mean, yes. that's what you're, that's what I'm hearing is basically this is a yeah. an opportunity to add some significant element of simplification yeah. to the data center, which I think also speaks to CIO as well. Now, I know we've talked a little bit, maybe longer than we want to. Do we have time to talk about one more technology trend? We do, trend? and I, I think that goes to significantly towards that simplification trend that we just talked about. Go ahead. Great. So, what about the web scale model? Right. Yeah. This, there's this this emerging technology called converged or hyper-converged storage. This is where you are leveraging your compute resources to come together to provide to become a storage platform. And it typically leverages SSD as a caching tier, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And rotational media as a capacity tier. So I think from a performance element, the expectations should be very in line with what you would see if I'm putting host side server cache or I've got some hybrid type solution. Now realize I don't represent those products, so I'm not trying to say that they can't scale and aggregate to some massive performance number. My point is from a basic construct, they're very similar in archi architecture. Flash is a cache, it's not a data storage tier. The, what's interesting about this model is that most cite Google as the source. They say, look, look at Google, it's hyperscale, they're web scale, they, yeah. they solve their storage problem with this. I think we miss the, the constraints of time, technological advancement, and economics when we make that argument. Google ran into this issue 15 years ago. Google, right, when we were all running data centers with standalone servers, with their own direct attached storage, right, or their own, maybe we had a SAN, but you partition LUNs directly to those servers. That was the enterprise. Right. Google was building web farms, and web farms that we're talking to, SAN storage. Google found really quickly that tens of servers can overwhelm a SAN. Fast forward to where we are now in the enterprise data center and we live in server farms or more specifically clusters. Big data clusters, virtualization clusters, and what have we found? 
I can overrun shared storage within a SAN, right? Right. If by SAN I'm saying mechanical disk SAN, right? Google built the distributed architecture by throwing more hardware at the problem and did so economically by using servers that would mirror data sets, and that became Google File System. Google File System is brilliant. Throwing hard drives at it is steampunk, right? That was just brute force. Yeah. So they didn't now, have any other choices. So fast forward to today. So is your argument, could I do a hyper-converged platform and the disk drives in that hyper-converged platform are cheaper than a SAN disk drive? They are. But what you're going to have is a, du a duplication or a triplication of your data set based on availability requirements. And what does it do to your data center resources? What's the increase in heat, rack space, cabling, power, and sparing. by the way, and sparing, and by the way, this is what surprised most people when I talked to them about joining Pure. Over 50% of the customers that I talk to aren't talking about performance. They're talking about data center, data center resource constraints. They're out of space. They're out of power and cooling. When you flip to an all-flash model, you, you significantly realize that, wow, I just shrunk that footprint mm -hmm. significantly and cooled the data center. And as I continue to churn from disk to solid state, right? And this technology is going to take a long time, right? There's a, probably a three or five year window where the tier one gets addressed first. Right. And then somewhere from, you know, after that where the tier two gets addressed in solid state. But as you churn through replacing disk with solid state, you're going to start unplugging AC units. Right. Right? And freeing up rack space and now taking that power to power more storage. And if you look at data growth trends, I think this is why guys who leave existing storage vendors, Joel and I, vendors that have wide portfolios of technology with flash sprinkled in everywhere, look up and say, the only long-term game plan for the data center is all flash. Or you can do a web scale model and start building new data centers annually. That's what Google does. <laughs> I don't think we want to go there. But Joel, <laughs> Vaughn, this was a great conversation. Thank you for, uh, for having us here today. And thank you for watching, and there'll be more videos to come.